Welcome to this week's episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. Um, we're going to change things up a little bit and I'm actually going to do a series on what I learned this season as a beginner bow hunter. Um, I grew up gun hunting from a really young age, but this was my first year of archery and I learned a lot of lessons, so this might be a couple few weeks series, few episode series, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about and one of the most important lessons that I think I learned was the importance of creating a beginner friendly shot for new archers. Um, something that I kind of took for granted when I was growing up gun hunting, muzzleloader hunting. I mean, if a deer came out in the field, you weren't really limited at all. With archery and especially as a beginner, it's, uh, it's a little more difficult and there are a lot more variables that you have to control. So I actually made a list so that I wouldn't forget any of them. Hoyt's Boning White Tails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Day Six Arrows, Code of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, and Hoyt. The goal with a new archer is to create the perfect shot. And the perfect shot is 15 yard maximum standing broadside shot. And that is a lot harder to create than you might expect. Um, so the first thing is the distance. Um, 15 yards, or you have to know what your comfortable, accurate range where you know every single time if a deer comes within this distance, I can make that shot and I can make a clean, ethical shot. My draw weight is high enough that that is my range. And then you don't want to you don't want to go outside of that. You don't really want to guess um, and say, ah, I can probably pull it off because, or at least I know personally as a beginner, I don't have the judgment or the experience to make those kinds of calls and feel comfortable doing that. So keeping it within your comfortable shooting distance is really important. Um, another variable that's really important for controlling in these beginner friendly shots is the angle. You want a broadside, clean shot. Um, especially at the lower draw weights, like I shot, I think I was shooting 40 pounds this year. Um, and we saw in that buck that I killed, the arrow didn't go all the way through. I went back and backtracked him because it was just something about the sound of that hit. It just didn't sound hollow. You know, it sounded like a thump. So I went back and backtracked thinking, well, I'm going to find that arrow because that, if it hit his shoulder, it's going to break off in that corn. And I went back and I found it on his, on his back trail in the direction where she shot it. So we had the two practice arrows that she shot, but we picked those up and we could see how much arrow was left in the deer. So there's probably nine inches of arrow, nine to 10 inches of arrow in the deer. That's quite a bit, you know, because if you look at it, I mean, his lung cavity is only that wide. You know, and there was that much, there was about that much arrow in him. So he, he probably got both lungs. Yeah, it's and just that with the draw weight that you're shooting, it didn't go all the way through him, so there was no exit hole. Right. So that means that the blood trail was going to be fairly light. Right. So that just kind of further emphasizes with the lower weights, you know, you don't have as much wiggle room if they're kind of quartering one way or the other. Uh, you don't have that power that a heavier draw weight might have to make that clean ethical shot. So having a clean broadside shot within your comfortable range is really important for a beginner. And then another thing that's really important for controlling is the openness. Um, more experienced archers are able to kind of shoot through branches around branches. They know how their arrow is going to react. They know how they're going to react. They're better at gauging those kinds of things. Personally, I wasn't. I didn't feel comfortable doing that. And so we, my dad created shots that didn't even have to worry about those kinds of things. Um, didn't have to worry about the branches in the way or the grass in the way or making any of those judgment calls. Really, it comes down to minimizing the amount of judgment that you have to apply to a, to a shot, to a potential shot. And just knowing that if the deer comes into this area that you've created, out of the stand, it's going to be a shot that you feel comfortable taking. And creating the perfect shot kind of comes at the cost of creating more opportunities. So you're, with a beginner, you're opting for the quality of the shot opportunities versus the quantity of them. And we really saw that a lot this year because I spent almost the whole season hunting out of two different locations. There was the open gate stand. As you can see, there's an open gate 
in a cornfield. So pretty much any deer that are on this part of the farm that want to go out to that cornfield are going to go through this open gate. So now we got to figure out which tree to get into. And I don't want her, you know, if you look over, a, you know, right over my shoulder, uh, you can see a hickory tree, but it's right at the edge of the gate. So it's, in fact, I think one of the gate posts, yes, the gate actually attaches to that hickory tree. So that's too close. Uh, I don't want her ha having a deer come right underneath the tree and then have to deal with the shot that's almost straight down. I mean, that's a hard enough shot for me shooting 80 pounds and 32 inch draw, you know, let alone, you know, Jordan's probably going to be 40 pounds and 25 inches. And uh, that's just not enough kinetic energy for that kind of a shot angle. So I figure we got to get her about 15 yards. You know, we're, we're dealing with Jordan's first deer. It could be a doe. It could be that nice uh, seven pointer. Uh, it could be any number of bucks that come through here, but um, we're not going to stress too much about which deer comes through. Uh, whatever comes through first is going to be the one that we, you know, we, we take our, our our first lick at. And then there was that ground blind, old unreliable as we came to call it, but it ended up being reliable and it ended up being the one that I shot both a doe and a buck out of this season. I'm going to move this blind up onto one of the ridges behind me here that there's a, it's an old pasture. Well, it's not an old pasture, it's a current pasture. The cows are going to be out of there next year. But in the meantime, uh, the guy that I bought it from uh, had somebody leasing it and they had made a electric fence around a little small corn patch. Well, the, <laughs> the cows got through the fence and trampled the corn, but there is still some corn left. It'll be a cool spot, if not for bow hunting, at least for you know hunting during the late season. Maybe if our son uh, gets a, a gun tag or whatever. Uh, either way, it'll either be a really good bow stand or a really good uh, late muzzleloader stand, but it'll hunt way best out of a blind up there. It's tricky trying to figure out exactly how to shoot out of a blind if you've never done it before. So we went through and rehearsed uh, all the different shot angles that Jordan might get, trying to figure out if the deer is here, how are you going to do it, which window are you going to shoot through. And with these redneck blinds, it's really nice if you can shoot out the corner window because it's a vertical window that allows you to go up and down for a closer or a longer shot without having to worry about hitting the window, you know, the bottom of the window. So that's a concern uh, shooting out the front window, but it's all a learning experience. You know, this is stuff that I take for granted because I've hunted out of blinds for, you know, 10 years. We're heading to the blind that's on this small corn plot and I think that's going to be uh, where Jordan spends most of her time now for the rest of the season, at least for the foreseeable next few days. Uh, it's, it sets up well for her. Uh, the shot's predictable. It's not very long. You know, if we try to get into open areas like larger plots and field edges and stuff like that, the shots could be anywhere from 10 to 50 yards. And she's really a 10 to 15 yard, uh, I would say, uh, person right now. And uh, you know, that that's a good spot for that. We're going back to the Groundhog's Day blind. Old faithful. <laughs> Old unreliable. Old unreliable. Obviously we're going back again to the same blind that we've been hunting uh, over and over. It still makes the most sense. And then it's an, a nice, uh, perfect length shot, pretty well controlled setup for Jordan. Let's go get in the blind. He came out like, I mean, he kind of snuck up on us and he stood in the same place just right in front of us for just taunting us for like five, ten minutes. I almost had a lane when he was standing out there in the tall corn, but I'm not experienced enough to take those risks and I, I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure that it was a good shot. My dad wanted me to make sure it was a good shot. So finally he took a few steps forward and kind of came into the edge of the standing corn. And I got got a shot and it looked good. Um, fingers crossed, we're gonna go look for him now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh. Well, congratulations. Thank you. That's exciting. Those kind of illustrate 
the perfect beginner shots. Um, there were a few things maybe that in a perfect, perfect world, it would have been a little different, but for what we could control, I mean, out of the blind, we had the area of corn, and if a deer came within the area that I could see out of that blind, we knew that it was going to be within range of what I could shoot, and uh, out of the tree stand, we knew that if it came, if the deer came through that open gate passageway or into the little, I think it was just grass, I don't, I think it might be a food plot this year, but at the time it was just grass. If the deer, if the buck came within that area, it was gonna be a shot that I would feel comfortable taking. So we ended up not seeing very many deer. If you're following along, you probably saw that. But what the ones that we did see were shots that I was comfortable taking. So all of this to illustrate that while the, I might have not been able to go to some of the shots with the higher, the higher density of deer, like my dad, where you would have had to apply more judgment, some of the open woods types of shots where it's not quite as controlled, the, the deer that did come provide, pre presented me with good clean shots and they were really beginner friendly shots we uh, we controlled all the variables that we could control in order to set those up one of the most important lessons that I learned this season was what goes into creating a beginner friendly shot and uh, it really comes down to controlling your distance your shot angle and the openness of that spot and sometimes that comes at the cost of more opportunities in favor of better opportunities so I will be back again um, in the next couple of weeks with some more lessons that I learned in my first season of archery, but thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails, and remember to always dream big.